Hello, welcome back to the Project Hercules Diaries. So we have everything together, the piston, you can see the top of the piston there and the top of the sleeve and they're both more or less at the top of the travel. We've got all the chain in there to drive the sleeve drive crank and the bearing holder and everything's all locked up nicely. It isn't fully timed yet and I think we've got a challenge that we're going to have to address before we can continue and I'll show you exactly what that is. So as I rotate the flywheel in the direction of travel you see the piston descends and it just misses the sleeve as the sleeve rises there so um, that's good piston descends valves are now open on the sleeve just closing what we've got here is we just almost exposing the bottom scraper ring of the piston and I think for static turning that's fine but I think with any kind of engine speed I think that's too fine a margin to risk that popping out under load or under acceleration. So you wouldn't necessarily want to see that amount of ring exposed. Um, so again, do something with the, the sleeve time and keep rotating. You can see the piston descends no probably problem or the valves are closed. That would be the compression stroke. And then we come down for the exhaust stroke, opening the exhaust valves, which are on the other side here. So look, looking quite good at the moment. The problem we've got, however, is that as we complete the exhaust stroke and we start to come back again, sorry, the power stroke and we start to come back again, the conrod then touches the sleeve about here. And it doesn't matter what I do with the timing, I can't prevent the conrod from touching the sleeve, either on one of the on the upstroke or the downstroke. There's always a point at which the conrod touches the sleeve. So uh, that or the piston ring drops out the bottom of the sleeve there and that gives us a problem. So I think the only answer for that would be to machine a little bit off the conrod. It's not really a problem because the conrod, as you, as you can see, is, is a very thick conrod. Um, and there's no there's no issue with machining a little bit of the conrod off. The decision is going to be: Do I try and do that in situ with by protecting swarf from going into the main bearing and, and bolting the whole assembly onto a mill, um, or do I uh, take the flywheels apart so the conrod can be removed? But last time I had to go to Essex to borrow somebody's hundred ton press to get the crank pin pushed in, and of course then we had to tweak the wheels to get it to run within five thou. So the preference would be to machine it in situ. But the chief head fairy, Mr. Bob, is not in at the moment. Mr. Bob may have um, a bit of a brainwave on that, uh, and we'll just have to wait and see. He's due, about, due back in a bit, so I should consult with the, the wise sage and see what we can possibly do about that. Obviously, we can't take anything off the sleeve. Wouldn't want to risk doing anything to the sleeve because it's the only one we've got. It's made in the 30s. And there are none of those left so we we'll just have to see if there's any any alternatives you can see where the crank uh, casing sorry we can see where the casing has been milled out there i did that operation the other day um and that's the latest update so won't be a few updates for a bit now because i'm going away for a bit on my bike have a bit of a holiday with a mate um but that's how we are that's where we are at the moment it's not an insurmountable problem everything is fixable and so far we are looking quite good so as ever thank you for watching more updates will follow